What's up guys? I'm Jayzinski. Welcome back to the Banner Saga. We're picking up where we left left off when we went through those weird swamps, the crag marshes or craglands, whatever they're called. We fought the crag men, escaping from them. We lost several people, and by several I mean a few dozen. But we did escape with our lives, and we made it here to Grundar, where we met some horseborn centaur people, who are really interesting, and we're going to be able to talk to a couple of these guys. So we're going to go ahead and talk to the horseborn first. His name is Skathak, I think, or Skathak. Thank. You glance at Ubin, who snorts and smiles. Skathak's thanking you for helping his friend, Roek. Erdry was the other one. But she's not in a talking with Varl and humans mood. You're welcome. I'd like you to meet Hakon. Skathic's tail swats his flanks, and he bows his head towards Hakon. Varl, man's. Same herd. No, but we're no longer enemies. I haven't seen Horseborn in centuries. Last they knew, humans and Varl were at each other's throats. What brings you so far north? Skathak looks confused by the question, so Ubin shows him the map, pointing to Dalaland and Grundar. Ood. Our planes break. Akon snorts. Might be justice. Didn't they kill all the horses, Scrivener? His ancestors did, yes, but blaming folks for things that happened hundreds of years before they were alive. You may as well accuse these humans around us of starting the Great Wars. What happened to Roak? Roek, brave fighter, protect food, hit many times. Hit? Who was attacking? Skathic says many things in his other language. Uh, Trigger Kanthe. His eyes go wide and he stomps the ground before pointing west. You look at Ubin. I don't have a clue, but clearly not a friend. Was it the people here? Here in Grundar? Uh, Skathic looks where Hakon is pointing. He shakes his head and points west again. The Varl King eyes Skathic suspiciously. How do you know our language? Skathic just stares at you. You talk like us. Where did you learn? Her little trade with mans in mud. I think he means our bog friends, the Cragsmen. Uh, does this mean all the horseborn have come north? Many. Not all. Not all herds. Same. Herds fight herds. Many fights. Sounds like no one likes the horseborn. Not even themselves. Ubin gives Hakon a sideways look. Others take food south to us herd. His hooves scuff the ground during certain words. Just those two? What about you and the couple? Skathak, Roek, Gurdru stay. This herd help. We help this herd. Well, thank you. Skathak nods in a movement that uses most of his upper body. Man, Varl, horse burned. Same herd. Funny. Ubin chuckles, and you smile while Hakon shakes his head and walks away. I think Hakon's a little racist. Alright, time to ho talk to Hogan. The blonde axeman, one of two twins from a small village near Skoger, is chopping into a fallen tree for no apparent reason. His swings look dangerous. Hogan, everything okay? He glares at you. Where's your brother, Mogan? He left with the ravens, wondering if I should have done the same. Why is that? I followed your father a long way, and now you. And for what? My brother's gone. My wife and children are frightened of everything around them, including me. I tell them this constant fighting is only for a time, but it's changing me. I see it in their eyes, in my own reflection. I thought I was doing it to protect them. But if they think I'm a monster, what's the point? Well, maybe you should hang up your shield and axe, man. You look shocked by your response. Really? What about all the other fighters? I'd be laughed at around the campfire. No one doubts your skills in a fight. Besides, if your family's important, you can handle some ribbing, right? 
You're making sense. Sort of. Still feels like I can protect them better by fighting. Depths! You make big decisions every day. Just make this one for me, will you? Hmm. Hogan. Oh, man. Dude, maybe you should just be with your family. Hogan sighs with relief and nods. Well, I'll still be around. But I'll be busy playing with my kids. Thanks, Alette. And be safe out there when you're fighting. I'd rather him be happy with his family. I think we can take it. I think Arvaral can help us out. Alright, time to rest. Alright, we're going to check out the market real quick, see what they got for sale. We'll go up to 15 days worth of supplies. And we have 11 renown. We got anything here worth getting? Um, plus 2 will talents, plus 2 strength, plus 3 will. That's really good. Um, let's go with 14 days of supplies and get that. Alright, uh, who can wear that? It's a level 6 item. Do we have anyone that's level 6? Not yet, but we will. Alright. Time to continue on our journey to the south. Let's see how far we are right now. Alright, so this is Grundar. Arborang is actually pretty close. Um... We had to go through... Well, there's Orm's Dollar. We had to, like, cross from, like, some massive gap. It was awful. But if we keep following the Eastway Road, we should get there soon, I'd think. Raven and his company went to Bindal. I wonder if they're going to go take this road west through the Windval. But let's see where we go. Our destination is Arboring. Let's see if we can get there. Now that Roex had a chance to heal, two of the horseborn are heading south to deliver some supplies to their people. What crazy ideas in your head, Scrivener? With the world falling apart around us, there may not be another chance to trek down south. What? Listen to yourself, Ubin. The world is breaking. I don't expect a human to understand. But a Val as old as me has more important goals than just staying alive. But what about that competition you all have for who lives the longest? I've always understood the rules to mean you're actually doing something, not holding up somewhere safe. Besides, I guess his Snorri didn't make it out of Grofheim when the Sunder attacked. I might already be the winner. Well, I'll miss your story, Zubin. With any luck, I'll have more of them when we meet again, little one. You taking your hired muscle? Oh, God, you're not Hakon. You taking your hired muscle with you? I'd feel better if Gunnar stayed with all of you. That blade of his is sure to attract the wrong kind of attention. Wrong attention might find you anyway. Then who will protect you? I'm old, not an idiot. I've learned a few tricks to keep my head on my shoulders. The younger Varl shrugs and walks off to find food. Then be safe, Ubin, and join us again if you can. You know where we're going. Don't worry about me. Just make sure you're alive to see this thing through to Arborang. Farewell. Scrivener says a few more goodbyes before departing with the Horseborn. Goodbye, Ubin. Oh, man. There he goes. That absolute Chad. Oh, I'm gonna miss him. Hoobin was my fave. That's the governor. The governor catches up to you and asks for a moment of your time. His bodyguard is beside him, silent. It's not getting any easier, is it? Probably won't get easier until we get to Arborang. Quit fooling yourself, girl. Capital's going to be a different battlefield, but a battlefield nonetheless. Quit calling me girl. 
and quit talking like one. Prepare for hard fights, to be lied to. Prepare for the worst in others. You look at Ruga's guard, Dagger. Is he always this cheerful? The man says nothing, but only occasionally blinking to break his stare. Listen, I didn't come over to insult you. Then why does it feel like that's exactly what you're doing? The governor is about to react, but calms himself. It is across this wasteland. Try not picking up any more strays, will you? He sneers in the direction of the horse born before leaving you. Bruh. That damn governor is an a-hole. Few of the weavers have been smiling more than usual lately, and now you know why. Helio leads children out from behind a cart in new costumes. Some have horns on headbands, while one red-headed girl wears a green cloak like yours. A boy wearing a red cloak is carrying an axe. The entire caravan gathers around to watch the performance. The young actors stand behind a short wall and discuss an approaching dredge army. As a black cloth rolls across the ground in front of the actors, a young man in red armor stands up and shouts, Bellower. This is a reenactment of the Battle of Beauregard. I'll continue watching. The dark-haired girl holding a spear says, We'll get no help from the governor. We're on our own. A few people in the crowd laugh while Ruga stares at the skull. The young Rook, Alette, and Val run towards the fierce, fierce bellower, attacking and being repelled. Finally, the girl dressed as Juno hands Rook a silver arrow. Rook hugs Alette and shoots the arrow. Bellower roars. Stand and watch the ending. Bellower grabs Rook by the throat and growls. You sense heads in the crowd turning towards you when Alio and a weaver suddenly snap the caravan's banner in front of the scene like a curtain. As the banner lowers, the young version of you cradles the boy dressed as your father. The other actors stand in a semicircle around you and begin singing a familiar tune. The crowd joins in and an impromptu line forms with everyone walking by to lay a hand on your shoulder. Oh, That's so nice. So sweet of them. I had to take a drink. A woman hauls a young girl in front of you and a crowd of others. Caught her stealing enough food to feed a starving varl, the woman says. Not the first time I've seen her at it either. The girl looks familiar. She's part of the thin group of humans you picked up on the trail. Why were you stealing? Never know when you'll get rid of us, the girl says. People always get rid of us. Her mother bursts through the crowd. Stupid girl, these people were good to us, she says, but it's too late. Drifters! Come, the angry shouts from the clansmen. Drifters are people without a banner. They are blamed for all sorts of woes, mostly undeserved. The Varl and clansmen alike run them off before you can make sense of it all, but you're left wondering what will become of them. Man, that was kind of harsh, guys. Ahead, the caravan comes to an immediate halt. That's the second feign shoe this bloody beast has thrown in a day! The yox tender curses. It will take some time to see to the yox, so you call for camp. Oh, it's Juno! Huh. While most of the clansmen sleep or lose themselves in drink, Juno requests a moment to speak with you alone. I'm impressed so far, Let. You've managed to keep your composure through tough situations. Thank you. Not to pain you with further comparison. But, remind you, but you remind me of your father at the Godstone of Straves. Determined. What actually happened there? Your father faced down his fears, walking through thousands of dredge to obtain the only weapon that could bring down Bellower. That's incredible and frightening. I don't know if I could do something like that. The Valka gives you a maternal smile. Neither did he. Juno patiently awaits your reply. Tell me his death meant something. I can't do that. Rook's death was unfortunate, but his life, his life was very important. The people he brought here from Skoga, including you, and all the others along the way are being forged into what the future will require. The previous era of peace is over, and one of survival has begun. Arboring may be the best shelter for the coming storm, but the people there are soft, too dependent on a society that will no longer exist. Because of the dredge? Partially, but mostly because of a coming darkness that is pushing the dredge. 
You keep talking about this darkness, but no one has ever seen it. You've seen the signs of it coming. Dredge in numbers, the land breaking apart. It's a force unlike any other. I wish I could say more, but even the Mender Council is ignorant to this. Why me? Couldn't others learn to lead this caravan? The straight answer is yes. Others could do it. But the clansmen choose to follow you under that banner. If you didn't appear worthy, you would be replaced. Why don't you lead them? Valka's life is one of knowledge and secrets. We help when and where we can, but it rarely amounts to trust from others. These clans joined your banner out of hope. They would follow me out of fear. If they end up in Arboring either way, what's the difference? Who they are when they reach Arboring is exactly why they are important. Fear will soon spread like flames across dry tender in that town. Without this caravan's hope, all will be consumed and burned to ash. I don't understand how you got involved in all this. In terms, I think it's all my fault. None of this. I'm not sure I could have stopped it. She sees your wide-eyed expression and attempts to clarify. How I became involved is confusing at best. But you and I share something in common. We're both learning what we have to do as we go. But only the future will tell if my role is villain or hero. Okay, I don't know what the fuck that's supposed to mean, but that is creepy as shit, Juno. Thank you. I should get back to helping the others. Before you go, there is one thing I must address with you. The serpent. Oh, God. Chasm at Ormsdollar and the tremors in the ground concern me a great deal. Yeah, me too. Should that incredible creature ever resurface, do not attempt to stop it. It would take power unseen in ages to affect the serpent. If you see it, run. Her words chill you as you find yourself nodding to her command. Okay, well, hopefully we never see it again. Ugh. Well, there's no reason really to rest, except, well, we'll rest one day, then we'll leave. We just gotta go. We gotta keep going. We gotta keep heading to Arborite. We gotta get there. Game trail, one of a few gathered hunters says, looking at the beaten path of grass. No telling what we'll find down it, but it'll fill some stomachs. Um... Make a wager for who brings back the biggest kill. Everyone in the group starts smiling and tossing coins in a purse before heading down the trail. When it branches, two hunters sprint left and three think the center trail looks promising. Um, search the ground for any clues. The hunters took paths with cloven hoof tracks. There's a chance you could kill the largest hog among them. To the right are rabbit tracks and possibly something much bigger, but it's hard to tell. Uh, I don't trust the dredge part, so let's follow the hunters down to the left. Two hunters who came this way are working together to take down a large boar. They handle the dangerous beast deftly with a few arrows and a spear. Though you can keep looking, besting their kill by yourself could prove fatal. The other hunters are late in returning, and two of them are helpfully in the third. The man's leg is bleeding, but it will heal. Didn't see the other male coming, one hunter says. Just glad we all got clear. The two hunters split the winnings, and drinks are shared while the injured man's leg is mended. Later, the entire caravan enjoys the stories of the hunt while feasting. So we got some supplies, and we should have probably got some morale from that. But we didn't, but whatever. Another town. What's this? Lundar. You notice the archer, Nid, because she's standing perfectly still, looking out into the distance. Let me guess. You see more grass. When she turns to you, she's not smiling. Dredge, she says quietly. How is that possible, you ask, knowing better than to doubt her sight. I thought we lost them at the chasm. You can make out a dust cloud on the horizon. You can, which means they can make out one produced by the caravan. And it's heading the same direction as you, toward Lundar. The Valka walks to your side and says, I was afraid of this. Cracks in the ground along the East Way Road. It's like that damn crevice at Sigurholm all over, Hakon says. The dredge were just pouring out of it. Does that mean they could... Juno finishes your question. Pee almost anywhere? Yes. But let's not panic the caravan. Just keep moving. Oh, God. I hope we get to Lundar before them. 
Lunter, the archer's haven, home to the finest fletchers in the world, though it appears beset with war. More horseborn? Oh, yeah. Horseborn, why are they attacking? Horseborn are attacking? Why? They must be desperate. Looks like the dredge are hitting the town too. Why aren't they fighting each other? Oh, so sweat, this is bad, Hakon says. Hunder's fighting on two fronts and barely holding it together. Hakon's been warring long before you were ever born. His worried look is unsettling. Always oh, heard the horse born in trouble with walls since they usually fight in open fields, he says. Uman's the only one old enough to actually know, but it doesn't really matter because those walls will barely slow the dredge. And if those dredge flatten this town, we're defenseless out on these plains, Ivor says. But what are the horseborn after? All eyes turn to Roek, Durdrio, and Skathek. The three horseborn in your camera are pointing and talking excitedly in their own language. Durdrio nods towards Roek, tossing her head and baring her teeth. You are surprised by the look of savage fury on their faces as the couple takes off without warning. A charging the attacking horseborn. While Skanlek remains behind, he clearly wants to join them, but he waits your decision. They could die on their own, our leaf shouts, not hesitating to follow Roek and Durdryu. I ever sighs. She's lost her mind over those new members of the clan. Might lose her life for it too. He looks at you. We could fight Dredge or Horseborn. Or split up and fight both if you're feeling suicidal. For splitting up my Varl or hitting the Dredge, Hakon says. We're good at that. Ingvar can do what he wants. He always has. I want to know... Maybe we can ask Skathic. Why did they take off like that? Skathic bites his lips and flips his mane left and right. Return fight? He is either nervous and hiding something or cannot find the right words. Hakon spits. We don't have time to figure out his stomps and tail whipping. Let's stop the horseborn. The horseborn are much faster. You and the others follow Roek and Durdru against this unfamiliar foe. Looks like the force you trained is roughly the size of the enemies. Oddleaf is hemmed in near two horseborn you assume are Roek and Durdru, but the kicked up dust cloud blurs you sight. We can drive a wedge straight for her, Ivor says, but these horseborn are fast. If these flank us, we'll take heavy losses. Shield wall, advance slowly and keep them from flanking us. Exactly how I would do it, Ruga says. No sense in risking everyone for a few who are foolish enough to blindly enter this fight. Begin the attack. God, I hope Oddleaf is okay. Your army advances against the unknown tactics of the enemy horseborn. Probably a lot of flanking. Alright, so. We're gonna take, um, Ivor. No, wait, hang on. Uh, yeah, we'll take Ivor with us. And I want Skathak in here. He could be really useful. Put him in the place of Ivan. Get Ivan out of here. Um, Moger needs to be in here, and so is Gunwolf. I don't really trust any sort of archer movements, unless we only have one, and that'll be a let, of course, always is. Um, let's get Trigby up to his next level. Um, what's that do? Ooh. Hmm. I'm going to give him a 15% bonus crit strike. That'd be really nice. All right. Let's get in there. <laughs>